Hey guys, Simply Rocco here. Thanks for joining me in this special uh, edition on Simply Rocco's uh, vlogs. I have a special guest today. We're going to talk to Kasaya. She is a shoutcaster in the Philippines. She has been in the gaming scene for quite a long time. Uh, I've uh, known her for a couple of years. And she's now in the crypto space with uh, crypto games. And I have her on now to explain a little bit more what she does, how she does things and how uh, some of you may be able to get involved. And let's bring her on. Hello. Hey, how are you? How's it yes, going? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I know it's you've been trying to reach me, reach <laughs> out to me, and finally we're here. Yeah, I know. I know you're really busy, so it's okay. I understand. So basically, let's, uh, let's get right to it. Let's, uh, let's uh, explain who you are and what your background is and what you do in, in gaming in the Philippines and now like in the crypto space. Yeah, sure. So uh, people know me, actually even you, right? You knew me from the gaming space, from the esports scene as well. I, I can mm. remember during Twitch days when it was yeah. like really booming in here in the Philippines. And, you know, it's just so fun. Like you get to communicate with people. So, um. Well, but even before that, before I was in that space where I was gaming, streaming, and uh, doing shoutcasting stuff, I was actually doing some game development. So I was originally a game programmer. I've worked with GameLoft uh, when they uh, when they had the office in here in uh, in Manila in Makati, and. Uh, uh, there, I was doing some programming and also project management. I also got to work with Gabby Deason, one of the owners of YGG, as you know it. Mm -hmm. I worked with him in Anino Games, the first game development company here in the Philippines. So a lot of people in the esports and gaming scene, you know, in, in the flesh, in public, doesn't know about this background of me, where I originally came from, or what I have mm -hmm. been doing even before shoutcasting and streaming. So that's where I originally came from. And uh, and as you know, for the past five years, I've been doing some some shout casting, mostly in mobile MOBA scene, that because that's where I originally got started from Mobile Legends, Bang Bang to Marvel Super War to Arena of Valor, and now for League of Legends, Wild Rift. I think that's my main forte. Right. And uh, yeah, and last year, from late last year, I started hopping into the crypto space, NFT and crypto space. I think you know a, a lot of us actually got involved with it because of Axie Infinity. It, it's a it's a given. Yes. So that's why. But I, I got to admit, um, you know, because me, um, I'm really an OG gamer. Let's say I really appreciate those that has really good gameplay and all that, um, the graphics as well. Like I have high standards per se. So I think uh, that's the reason why I've tried Axie Infinity, but really didn't really get into it, into actually playing the game or investing into it. But, but I learned to appreciate it still because it offers a lot of opportunities for other people, especially those, say, um, because of the pandemic as well. Lots of many people have actually lost their jobs. So I was just basically on that observation period during the first and mid part of, uh, of 2021. And mm -hmm. late 2021, I already just really got into the space, really getting involved in a lot of different projects. Right. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned Axie. Axie's really taken over uh, the Philippines. But which game are you uh, involved with right now? Uh, uh, I know that you, you weren't too th thrilled with Axie. So what, what is it that you uh, uh, which game or is it that you're involved in uh, and how can someone get, get uh, into playing that game? Yeah, currently I am involved with uh, Thetan Arena. I've invested in that game. Um, I have scholars in that game too. And uh, the reason why I'm in there is, you know, mostly because of the gameplay itself. I know maybe the right now currently, because before when Thetan Arena came in, you know, the ROI is so, so good. But I think pretty similar to any other play to earn games suddenly after the hype you know it kind of go it slows down a little bit because many people are actually using it or this developers doesn't you know find a good flavor or the kind of like mixture that's basically needed in order to uh really have that successful 
mixture of game and earning as well. So, but I'm mainly staying in Theater and Arena because of the gameplay. I really like it. I really like the concept. It's like Brawl Stars and it's so simple. The graphics is nice as well. But of course, it's not perfect in a sense like, let's say um, the developers themselves are having a tough time communicating with the community or there's not much activities ongoing as of yet. And like Axie Arena, they are really doing great sorry axi infinity they're really doing great in terms of events right but somehow that's not something that's something you cannot find right now in theater arena but you know that's why i always tell people like if if ever you want to dive into play to earn games always you know you don't have to catch everything for not because something came out you just have to catch it and feel like you're missing out so find what genre you like find what gameplay you you like because after all what's more important is that you're enjoying the game and you're not really suffering mentally in terms of okay i really have to go for this because in a way games it, it should help us to have fun right so i think it's sometimes it's really a matter of preference it depends on the guild owners as well if they want to like um invest in a particular game for earning purposes only or for a balance of gaming fun and earning or just for the purpose of gaming so it kind of differs but for me personally i value the the you know the game having a really good gameplay as well um or mainly rather than just you know forcing ourselves into playing or forcing ourselves into an imaginary <laughs> you know imaginary fun because right. we're earning uh in a particular game so yeah the you arena know, is currently so far uh my 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 gameplay to earn a game for now but i'm i can see that there's a lot of projects currently under development right now that has the potential and uh, there's this you know game developers uh big game developers uh that are really trying to dive into uh play to earn space already the metaverse too so it's, it's quite exciting i know not everyone can appreciate play to earn blockchain metaverse nft but it's okay it's it's pretty similar to what has happened before during the internet bubble right uh now another question i wanted to ask uh do you believe that playing these games is a good way for filipinos uh to possibly have a better life uh is it like what are there are there risks to playing these games obviously if you're dealing with uh, crypto and in the crypto space, what, what, what kind of things are people need to look for as far as risk uh, playing a crypto game such as Axie or Theta, Theta Arena? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I would say yes to the first question that you had. So definitely there is an opportunity. So we've seen in the news, you know, a lot of people actually uh, were able to put the food in the tables of their home because they were earning something out of this play to earn games. But that's from the side of the scholars, mainly mm -hmm. from the scholars, because they did not invest anything, right? <laughs> So, well, not really saying that they did not invest anything, but monetarily, they did not invest anything, like in terms of, you know, shedding out some money in order for them to be able to get into this game. Um, it's more like the dedication that they have to put in there is their time and effort into, you know, playing or grinding a particular game. But I think the risk that we have to, like, be wary of is, you know, the investment part. Those people are actually investing, shedding out money. Um, there is this... Uh, saying or they say that uh, you know don't in, invest in something you cannot afford to lose and that is true actually even even before even the existence of blockchain you know if we're talking about the traditional investing and traditional trading in the stock market um it's pretty similar it's just that we're putting some you know we're just adding a dish a different layer of technology in here in the play to earn and blockchain space so it's still the same thing up uh, the problem in here is i guess many people right now get in, gets into the hype wherein okay when people say that okay you can earn a lot from this but without any deeper knowledge about finance about about trading about crypto they just shed out some money because they see some proof from other people that hey they have earned something because they invested this amount of money so i think uh there's a lack of knowledge still with regards to some people I'm not saying all because i can see there are some group of people who are invested in really learning 
the concepts uh, behind the f uh, finance and you know trading and things like that so i think for everyone who my advice basically for everyone is to not get into not be a, a victim of hype to your own research as they always say but sometimes you know research alone will not be enough there's a lot of scams ongoing i would say let's say uh there is 10 th there's this uh 10 projects currently given to you but maybe only two out of those 10 projects are legit or really will really make it out there in the long run but some others are just like scams I'm not gonna make the word sound a little bit better but it's right. real you know <laughs> rug pulls are there there's a lot of victims out there um and what's the, the sad part in here is that some people yes they do have some money to shed out but you know they don't really have the savings or the backup or they I, I hear some sad stories about they're risking all their money for this venture but you know suddenly they realize you know they just they just a massive blow. so i think it's really important to educate ourselves first in in what we can lose and uh, and it it before going into this actual investing stuff because it's not really a joke maybe the scholars are having fun in terms of really earning and again because they don't have to shed out some money but for the investors you really have to you know uh watch out for what you're really getting into so i guess that will be my advice for everyone who wants to get into this kind of space because it's very risky and nothing's really sure about this yeah definitely uh it's the same thing as when you're investing in uh traditional crypto uh you you're, you're running a risk and and it's, it's always said that don't put money into that you can't afford to lose and a lot of people are doing that. They're taking that high risk. And if they lose it, then they're in deep trouble. So it does happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me let me ask you a question. When when these games started first coming out, uh, a lot of I noticed a lot of Filipinos were streaming it on Facebook and on Twitch. Uh, they still do. Uh, but Facebook had temporarily put a ban on saying uh, like on, on Axie. Uh, and similar games uh, for them being streamed. Do you think these games are similar to gambling? Do you think that that's... Uh... Um, about, yeah. I, I can remember that ban. I think it run sometime mid-2021, but it was lifted anyway. As you can see, mm -hmm. just a lot of people still doing all those uh, Axie and play to earn game streaming. So mm -hmm. I wasn't so clear about what the ha really has happened, but because I, I feel like there was just a misunderstanding because it was lifted said anyway right. right so but in terms of uh considering this a gambling i would say no like if we're gonna make use of the word gambling as well no it depends on how you really would want to make use of your money because this is more like really risk investment uh, mm -hmm. as i would say not really gambling but if you you're you personally you're really not trying to study uh, the concepts behind investments then you are probably gambling so it's it's a the, the the word or the terminology can be applied depending on her on how you, how a person would actually make use of his money so right. if you're literally just someone who's uh throwing out out of luck you know out of luck you just you feel like just because you feel lucky and all that that's probably gam gambling but Blockchain play to earn itself. No, it's not a gambling. It's very. It's just a risky investment. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually a little bit of a hot question. Um, do you think the government should be involved in taxing any of the money that uh, is being made off these games, uh, especially in the Philippines or like any, anywhere in general? Nah, because uh, it will lose the purpose of cryptocurrencies, <laughs> the <laughs> concepts and the purpose of you know, because in a way. Uh, uh, I, I think that's also the reason why you know some some countries are stopping this cryptocurrency stuff and all that for them to be able to uh, because you know, when you are in the blockchain you are in the crypto everything can be traced right because mm -hmm. it's in the blockchain so if we involve governments in here it's gonna lose its purpose the ownership as well the control they're gonna mediate in the transactions so i don't think the government should actually get into this or con control and again it's going to lose its purpose so i i think like 
many people will be disappointed if ever really the government would want to take control of let's say within the philippines all crypto transactions has to go through us it's it's going to defeat this purpose and uh, i think if ever they would even want to implement that it's going to be tricky because it's blockchain how can you like it's it's over the cloud who can touch it's, that yeah <laughs> the, uh like here with traditional uh uh, exchanges and everything now uh, here in the states uh, that's actually happening here uh, we get taxed on whatever gains that we get and everything so it, it's it's a touchy subject for some especially myself I, I i don't agree with it either so but you know different countries have different laws and different regulations but yeah that, that's that's actually true it, but it is happening here in the states it, and also also in canada i believe it, it depends on the country that you know the government wants their peace you know just what can you say <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's uh, kind of sad. But I, I, we, we can't as civilians, you know, we can't do anything about it. Mm. We have really no power uh, out of yeah. it. But hope it, things get better. Yeah, I have no other side comments about that. I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any stories where uh, scholars have been able to uh, have a better life by playing the game, or or the uh, people under the scholars? Yeah, um, and it's very touching. It's very touching experience, uh, wherein you know they just feel they just feel thankful, even though sometimes you, you the ROI comes back to you really really slow, or sometimes you go negative because of the trend of the market. But um, it's it's more than that because in here you get to empower yourself even yourself even more with regards to having the ability to help someone in a different way. So especially because of the pandemic, a lot of people lost, uh, lost their job. Um, my scholars in particular, they're actually very young. Um, most mm -hmm. of them really below 18 years old. So um, and them, they feel happy about themselves, too, even though it's not a huge, huge money, say. But it, it, it does allow them to help their family members and, uh, you know, free themselves from being, you know, somehow slaves of the economy because, you know, there's this you know they're having a tough time where to find or get income and them having fun since they're young they're playing a game and somehow they can earn something out of it so it's very it's more like uh it's a it's a it's a very personal thing already like uh, you're you're able to help out it's not just a matter of okay i'm your manager and now uh, we're gonna do this and do that it's not like a corporate kind of stuff you know it's more right. personal this time I think it's the same thing for many other guilds because community is a huge aspect of each of these uh, communities, each of these sub-communities. Yeah, and I think that's also important because I, I know I, I hear a lot of stories on how, uh, you know, how the younger uh, kids provide for the family in the Philippines. Uh, case in point, my own fiance, she she supports her family as well. So there's a, there's a big aspect of you know, helping the entire family and everything. And I think from what I've seen, this is actually a good way to do that, to help the family, provided they're, they're, they're playing the right way and don't lose the money, of obviously. Are there any special events coming for uh, Theta Arena or that, you know, that are coming to look forward to? Or are you looking for more scholars or people yeah. to be under you? And how, yeah. can, how can they contact you? Yeah, sure. Um, for Thetan Arena, they are planning to have these tournaments. I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but they are contacting lots of different organizers in here in the Philippines already. But I'm not sure if they're going to do it like global wise or in the Philippines first. But I think they're trying to eye into something similar to what Axie Infinity has been doing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something to look for forward to. Uh, it's part of the roadmap uh, so for some time, 20 late 2022 so uh, that's where i'm also preparing of actually i have four players under my team already that i'm also like preparing for that so in terms of hiring more scholars or getting more scholars uh under my uh my management or my my scholarship grant um i'm still thinking about it because right now the the market's currently super super low so it's not that I don't, I really want to empower more people, to be honest. But right now, I think it's not the time because it's it's super risky as of the moment. So I'd like to maintain the quality first of my current scholars before mm -hmm. adding more. Yeah, I think that's it for Athena Arena. As for my other events, upcoming events, well, 
non-crypto related well we're currently shoutcasting legal pledges so i'll drift wcs philippines so but i'm in the tagalog broadcast so if you just want to you know take a look at that so i'm gonna having the guesting with wax io they're gonna be featuring some women in the nft space and i'm gonna be guesting as someone who has this uh, knowledge or background in blockchain gaming and uh, and in, in gaming or play to earn gaming in general so it's gonna be exciting because uh, they're actually kind of big and uh, yeah um i don't consider myself as pro in this uh in this space to be honest i just have this background from gaming and all that but being in in there invited is such a privilege i believe and i think it will help out other people or the women in the space as well to be more confident uh in, in in diving into this space as well because i can see there's a lot of men in here too so i don't want yeah. them to like feel uh, you know feel embarrassed or anything you know no, confidence I, I, should be there <laughs> yeah no definitely because i see a, there, uh, in the last couple of years there's a lot a big influx of more women and more females uh getting into gaming getting into streaming just in general and now with you getting into the, to the crypto gaming space which i think is great we really should see more of that I've seen others, uh, other streamers, female streamers, getting get involved with that as well. So, that, it's it's a great thing to see, and you know, I mean, I, that that's uh, something that really needs to happen, and it really people need to see that. So, more people are aware uh, that you know it's not just a, hey, it's just not, not just a guy's place. You know, you know, women can get into it too, and they don't have to feel embarrassed or shy or anything like that to to do what they need to do. Just to, to whether it be earn for the family or get into gaming or follow their passion, you know, it, it doesn't matter men, man or woman, you know, you're, you're following your passion. You're doing something that you want to do for your life and make yourself happy. So I agree. What, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, you know what? It doesn't sometimes I feel like gender doesn't really have to be discussed anyway. So it's yeah. uh, just pointing out that uh, because I can see that, you know, there's a lot of female uh in the space that again feels uh, that they feel out of place and all that and afraid mm -hmm. to talk and speak like especially in group chats yeah. and all that so yeah i i think at some point we'll come into that phase wherein we don't really have to even mention genders right so it's just right. basically everyone getting into this space yep. okay so i think that's pretty much it you know i really appreciate having you here Yes, me uh, too. Awesome Thank you so that, much. That I finally get to speak to you kind, <laughs> kind of face to face versus just a little chat on the on the stream. Yeah. You know, so uh, anytime that I see you, I try to support you, you know, shit, whether, you know, sharing your stream or whatever. So definitely look forward to seeing more of you on stream. And hopefully when I finally get back over there, uh, we'll be able to meet up in person and uh, maybe do some other stuff as far as yeah. you know, interviews and stuff like that. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Rocco, as well. I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I'm glad to support you wherever you are, what endeavors you currently have right now. And to everyone who's currently watching, thank you so much for being here, supporting me and Rocco. All right. Thank you. <laughs>